But of that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. I don't know if what calls my attention also calls your attention to that concluding verse in today's gospel. But what calls my in, in, uh, attention is that not even the only begotten Son knows when. There was a uh, famous poet in the late 19th century and into the early 20th century, Henry Van Dyke. And he once wrote the following, time is too slow for those who wait, too long for those who grieve, too swift for those who fear, too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is not. So maybe for Jesus not knowing, it, it's okay, because he clearly is one who loves. And if Van Dyke has captured a truth here, it's that Jesus lives in the eternal now, which is why we Catholics can say that every time we gather to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass, Jesus's once and for all sacrifice is somehow made present, perhaps because for him who loves, time is not. But in all honesty, the question of when is not as troubling for me as the question why. And you can well imagine that as a priest over all these years, lots of people have asked me why, sometimes in a hospital room, sometimes in a counseling situation when a marriage is falling apart. That question not only troubles the person, it troubles me. Among those times, just for instance, is this week. I spent several hours, more than a couple, more than three, um, with a, a couple, a Guatemalan couple down at Mercy, whenever there's a Spanish-speaking um, patient, they, um, they call me. And it turns out that this woman suffered terrible hemorrhaging in her fifth month of pregnancy. The baby was born alive, but only survived a very, very brief while. And it was just one problem on top of various problems that this young couple have had. And I asked God, why? And that question, why, has challenged believers from the time that good old Job was sitting on the dung heap and people were coming to him and trying to give him answers as to why his life fell apart. But there is only one response that we can make when we try somehow to tie together suffering that seems without reason with a God whom we believe is firmly engaged in this world. And I think the one response is that our God is a God of mystery, that God's ways and our ways are not the same. So not, is it, not only is it that we don't know when, we don't know why. What do we do with that? Well, first of all, I think it's important to only, always hold fast to the fact that, that our God passionately loves us, that he created us to be happy with him forever in heaven. So for a person of faith, when tragedy strikes in this world, and we do 
ask questions, and rightly so. It's essential to keep our eyes on eternity because faith and hope are long-term things. It's the long view, which is the view of faith and hope. The book of the prophet Daniel that Rick read for us in the first reading today uses words like in uh, those days, at that time. And then we stop to think about and recognize that Jesus himself struggled with why. On the cross, he shouts out, my God, my God, why? Have you forsaken me? And in today's second reading from the epistle to the Hebrews, we hear that Jesus, that his once and for all sacrifice has taken place, but he needs to wait to see its results. As we heard, but this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. Our task then is not to calculate what angels do not know, but rather to faithfully watch and wait and try to be Christ compassion in the midst of it all, even if we don't understand when or why. It's important not to load fragile human schemes with hopes they cannot bear. And so we trust the promise because we trust the one who makes the promise. Another perspective has to do with a little story you may have heard me tell the story before, it has to do with um, a man who is giving a tour of some citrus groves out on the West Coast. And he takes a, a group to one grove, and because, as you know right now, it's a terribly dry period of years, well, the trees in the citrus grove are beginning to die for lack of water. But then he goes to his own citrus grove, and he tells them, look at these trees. These trees could go without rain for another two weeks. And the reason is that from the very beginning, I have used irrigation sparingly. And because of that, these trees have planted their roots slowly but surely ever deeper in search of what will nourish them. Sometimes suffering, unexplained suffering, can help us put our roots ever deeper Finally, returning to that understanding of God of mystery, who is totally other. Even though we don't understand what someone does or why they do it, it doesn't mean that we no longer love them. I mean, just think of how you deal with kids that don't seem to get it when you tell them no, no, no. You get frustrated but you don't love them any less. It is true that not understanding God can lead, yeah, to anger and frustration because we find it almost impossible to not know why. So when I gaze upon the cross, I think if that's true for me, how much more true was it for him who knew neither the day nor the hour nor the why? 
And if that is part of his sacrifice, when I place my sacrifice each week on the altar, it is truly part of my sacrifice, oftentimes as well.